Welcome back to the 2015 PRI show in Indianapolis, Indiana. Jim McElvain with Optimal Batteries here. And the hits keep on coming. We just had Chris Smith and Brett Vogel on a little bit earlier from Ride Tech, and now we've got Mike Copeland from Lingenfelter Performance Engineering. Series sponsor OUSCI sponsor. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks. Glad to be here. What's the big announcement? All right, we just announced that uh, for 2016, during the Holly LS Fest, Lingenfelter, along with the School of Automotive Machinists, is sponsoring the Battle for the Green Copo Shootout. So we put up $10,000 to the winner of the Copo Shootout during the Holly LS Fest. So for those who aren't familiar with the Copo cars, can you explain what they are and, and who's going to be eligible for this shootout? Yeah, the Copo car is the General Motors, uh, basically a race car that they sell built based on, they started in 2012 and they go through, now they just launched the 2016, but they're, they're Camaros that are delivered modified specifically for NHRA drag racing. They fit in a multitude of stock and super stock classes. And uh, they build 69 of them a year. Plus, they build between 50 and 100 body and whites that people can buy and, and build that kind of rolling chassis cars. Okay, so the 69 they build each year, what would you say the ratio is roughly of the cars that get tucked into somebody's garage and never see the street versus actually get run at NHRA events? Uh, each year, it appears that about uh, the first year for 2012, it appears about a third of the cars actually got used. Uh, and then from that point on, it's been about 50 50. Okay. So. And so that would be a competitor to like this drag pack challenge that we have in our booth here? It is the General Motors uh, Chevrolet version to compete with that car. Okay, and then Ford's got their own version with the Cobra Jet Ford cars. has the Cobra Jet. Yeah, Ford actually you kind of cut the path and created that. So them and Chrysler uh, were the first out. General Motors is a little late to the game, but uh, they're playing hard to catch up. And, at Lingenfelter, you know, we're kind of known for building power, so uh, that's right up our alley. So how many cars do you think will show up for this event at LS Fest to go after the $10,000? Well, our hope that, and our goal is to have at least 32 cars show up to do that. So it's really good timing because the uh, U.S. Nationals is a massive event for uh, stock eliminator cars, Copos in particular, and that's the week prior. So, and then the following week they go to uh, Pennsylvania and then they go to uh, North Carolina, NHRA does. So we're right on an empty weekend in the middle and the guys that travel from all around the country are already going to be in the Midwest. And what's the cash payout like or is there a payout for guys that are running at the NHRA national events as, as opposed to this one? Uh, they would, uh, if you won an event and if you had the right contingency sponsors, which, by the way, we're still working on. You would pocket about twenty-five hundred dollars. Okay. So it's so it's. I mean, normally they would win for winning the class. They'll win five hundred dollars, and in, in our race, you'll win ten thousand. So that's a big step up and a big reason for people to mark an extra weekend off on their calendar. Come on out and show us what you got. The other advantage is when you race NHRA, there's they have an index, and if you run faster, you get. Hit and add weight to your car or add horsepower to try and slow your car down. In our race, there's none of that. Bring it and let your tail hang out. So, that's so it's as fast as you, that's, it's not an index, it's not bracket racing, it's just run what you run. During the event, it is bracket racing, okay, but is. we'll qualify on, right. a, on a pro ladder. And, and so uh, if a guy runs 950s, he just wants to dial in and run 950s all weekend? Come on out and run 950s. Okay. And, and what, what, are, what are the times typically of the Coco cars that, that are running competitively? Uh, depending on the class, anywhere from uh, in the mid eights uh, up through mid nines, okay. depending on the class you're in. So there's about six or seven different classes the car can fit in. All right. Anything else going on with Lingenfelter? Do you guys have any cool new projects? or? Always. We, we saw a truck at SEMA. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's our, uh, our, our new pickup. You know, we did the Chevy Reaper a few years ago. That was a, a truck program that we created with a partner company and supercharged engines and long travel suspension and, and a lot of things like that. But all of those parts were only available on that vehicle. And uh, now uh, we've released all of those parts individually to the public. So you want our long travel suspension system? It's available. You can order it from Lincoln Thunder. You want horsepower? Pick a number, and, and we'll build it. So that truck had our our brand new 800 horse package in it, and uh, we're my guys are hammering the dyno uh, right now in, in both locations and uh, making more. So how many sixth generation Camaros do you guys have on order? 
Well, we had two on order. We actually have our first one, and at this exact moment, the first ever supercharged 2016 6th Gen Camaro is on the dyno being tuned. So we'll launch that, uh, all social media and, and everywhere else, uh, as soon as tomorrow. And what are your goals for that car? Are you guys going to try to chase 200 miles an hour with it and some of those other things that you do with the 5th Gens? Well, not that car, but we have another one that'll be there any day. And uh, let's just say that 200 miles an hour is not off of our radar. Okay. <laughs> so you, you guys have been a big part of Optimus Search the Ultimate Streetcar. Um, you've seen the 2016 schedule, a couple of tracks that we've run at before, a couple of new ones. Which ones catch your eye and which ones do you think will be of interest to a lot of fans of the series? Well, I, you know, Thunder Hill was a great event. I mean, that's a perfect way to kick off the year because in the Midwest, the weather is bad. You can't do anything anyway. So you may as well load that thing up and head for California. So that's a fun track and a fun event. We had a lot of fun there. It was our first year last year and be back there this year. Uh, Road America, always, always one of the best and most enjoyable and, frankly, one of the most challenging events on the schedule because we run it in one day. Yeah because of the way the schedule works. So a, re a really, really fun and, and challenging event. Uh, you know, Las Vegas, I, I love Las Vegas, but we do it twice a year. So it's fun, but not quite as exciting. Uh, you know, I, there's some new tracks that I, that a few that I haven't been to yet. So looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a good year. I think that you know the series has grown so much, and there's so many more people that want to be a part of it. I mean, you know, it's been announced that December 28th they'll open the registration. And if you plan to participate in one of those events for for 2016, I highly recommend that on the 28th you register. <laughs> Well, everybody that we've interviewed, the competitors from last year, uh, I think just about all of them have said Circuit of the Americas is one they want to be at. And yeah, I, and you know, that's sometimes I worry that tracks like that are almost too big. Mm -hmm. You know, if you use Daytona as an example, and I actually took the opportunity to run at Daytona myself, and I'm so grateful for that to check it off my bucket list because. I mean, if you've never done this, imagine turning into the bus stop on the back stretch of Daytona <laughs> at about 127 miles an hour. You know? And I wasn't one of the fast guys. So. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that, it's just those kinds of things are bucket list. The Circuit of Americas will be a bucket list track for a lot of people. Sometimes those tracks get too big and overwhelm some of the competitors because this is still regular people in a lot of the cars and doing a lot of the things and so you know i i think some people will be overwhelmed by it i think a lot of the regular competitors will love it yeah. people that got the experience will, will be out there foot on the floor and uh, you know i tell this story all the time at daytona we had estimated well no i think it's still on it's still on okay okay all right, so, so when you, we, when you we estimate ran, how fast you'd run it this yeah, time? Before we went, everyone was kind of estimating how fast we'd run it. And we figured 140 to 145 would be about the top speed there. And uh, I remember coming out of the, the, the second chicane that we put in just for that event, coming up on turn three in a, in a C7 Corvette and accelerating through there in 125, 130, 135, 140, 145. And I still had quite a ways to go and a lot of pedal left to get me there. And I thought, you know... 145 is just fine. So <laughs> I just held it there about 145 because I knew when I came out of turn four, I had to slow down a bunch and make a chicane. So we heard from a lot of people who ran at Daytona that that was the first time they ever consciously made the decision to lift at the track. That was my first time, to be quite honest. And uh, but and I do know what we recorded data in, in uh, the car that Danny drove, and uh, I recorded the data for that track. And that boy's got got guts. <laughs> So everybody knows Lingenfelter is all over social media and all the different channels and outlets. Are you on social media as an individual? Can people follow Mike Copeland somewhere on Instagram or something like that? Uh, I'm on uh, on Facebook. Uh, Mike Copeland is there. I'm on Twitter. Mike Copeland is there. But I have not made the jump to Instagram yet because, oh, by the way, I'm old. Okay. Uh, can, <laughs> and, and I know Lingenfelter doesn't do all the things that they do in our series and, and all these other events without corporate partners and people that, that get on board and help you guys do these things. Do you want to name a few of those folks off? Sure, love to. Uh, you know, Forge Line's a big wheel supplier for us, and uh, we use their wheels on a lot of cars. Uh, Bear Brakes, big partner in, in many of the cars that we do and in all of the stuff that we race in, in many different uh, events. Uh, Ride Tech, 
there all the time. You know, they're a good partner of ours, and uh, they run our motors in their cars. We run their chassis components in ours. Uh, you know, Continental Tire, Royal Purple, uh, it, it just goes on and on with the companies. Magnuson for superchargers for the applications we do it. So it, it, uh, we have a lot of really, really great partners that we're proud to have with us and proud to have a part of the team. We know we can use their products and they deliver. We can count on them. Uh, we, when we turn into a corner at 135 miles an hour, I don't want to have to worry about whether the car is A, going to stop when I get there, or B, the wheel's going to break when yeah. I turn in, or the tire's not going to grip, and I don't have to deal with that. Our stuff works. Well, thanks for stopping by, and we look forward to seeing you in 2016. Perfect.